Hi, in this video, I want to show you how to use Google's customer match. It's an amazing solution. If you're a Facebook advertiser, you already know what this is um, because Facebook has a utility that uh, works in much the same way. And it honestly, is probably a little bit easier to use. If you're not, let me give you the, the quick sales pitch. Google allows you to upload your customer information. So your customer database, name, email, phone number, etc., cetera, um, to Google ads. And then Google will identify those people and build an audience for you. And then you can use that audience for whatever you want. Not whatever you want. There's some limitations to it, but it's really cool. So you could use it, for instance, like customer reactivation, people that have canceled, or ascension for people that have bought and want to sell them more, or cross-selling if they bought A and you want to sell them B, or you know, retention. Who knows? Like if you want to just stay in front of people and love on them and um, etc. I'll leave this strategy up to you. I'm going to show you how it works from, a, pardon me, from a technical perspective. So let's go into the Google dashboard. However, first before I do that, I'm going to give you. Um, links to this in the description of the video. Read the customer match policy. There are some rules. Uh, at least 90 days of Google history, you have to spend 50 grand lifetime. Um, not an insurmountable threshold, but that's important to know. But a couple of notes here that I thought were highlight worthy. The first one is, is you have to have a privacy policy on your site that discloses the fact that you share customer data with third parties. Not everybody has that. So make sure that that's in your privacy policy. Um, you can't create content that implies knowledge of personally identifiable information. The reason I think this is important is because with a customer match list, you know a lot about this customer. So be careful about using that in your ad copy, um, or at least being too aggressive. And then the last one that I thought was noteworthy was don't get overly narrow because if you upload a customer list and then have an overlay, the example they gave here was like a geographic limitation, and it gets too specific, Google's not going to like that. So just FYI, read through these this documentation, I'll drop a link into the description as I promised. Now, in order to build a customer list um, um, or customer match, you need to go to uh, tools, under shared library, go to audience manager, and then in audience lists, we're inside of remarketing, uh, which is probably where it dumped you. Now, we're gonna click on this little plus button, handy dandy plus button, and then we're gonna select customer list. And you're gonna name your audience whatever you want. I'm gonna say action plan leads test. And I'm pretending that I'm uploading people that have requested an action plan from Solution Date. Keep the default selected. Uh, and just so you know, we're not using user IDs or mobile device IDs, so we're not going to use either of these options. We're going to use your normal customer data. This is the information that Google wants from you. I would limit it to this information because if you add additional columns or headers, then it throws errors. So email, phone, first name, last name, country, zip. Notice that you have to comply with Google's upload parameters. So for instance, country is two-letter country codes. Uh, phone number, you can see the formatting here is multivariant, but you have to stick to one of these options. If you don't, it'll throw an error. Google will give you a template here if you want one. Um, you can upload plain text data or upload hashed data uh, if you know how to do that or what that means. Uh, I'm going to upload plain text data, and uh, I've just got a dummy list here. Now, full disclosure, my dummy list, I, I don't want to upload a real list to Google because there are some compliance implications, and I'd rather not just raise my hand and say, hey, Google, come look at me and see if I'm cheating. So I'm only going to be able to go so far in this tutorial, and I hope you'll forgive that. Um, specifically with a pro tip that I want to drop. Um, but that just is what it is. So I'm going to say, hey, I did follow the rules. We'll see if that's true. Uh, expiration, you can say no expiration, which means they live in your, your, your uh, audience for as long as Google allows, which isn't forever, by the way. Google can, for whatever reason, and I don't understand this, but you'll see audiences drop over time. Um, and I'm sure there are reasons that a smarter person knows. If you know what that is, please tell me. I'd be interested. Um, or you can have an expiration between 1 and 540 days. If I try to do anything longer, it says no. So you can choose what your expiration is. I think it's based off of your audience, your sales cycle, your whatever. You know, if you're selling a certain type of, I don't know what, um, B2B device. And you're like, you know, if they've, if, they've, if they've engaged with this and they haven't bought within two years, chances are they've already made, um, you know, another, another decision. Or, or excuse me, two months. Um, they've already made it another decision that we're going to say 60 days. Um, I don't know. I don't know what your, your specific use case is. You can have no expiration here if you want no expiration. Um, description is entirely for you. It's internal. Uh, but once you're done, you're going to click upload and create list. And guess what? You're done. That's it. Now, it's going to take up to 24 hours for Google to complete um, the, the uh, matching. And you have to have at least 1,000 matched users. Uh, now, that doesn't mean 1,000 people in the database. It means 1,000 people that Google could find. Google's ability to match spans the spectrum. I've seen it work really well to where Google matched like a solid majority of the people that we uploaded. I've seen it work really poorly to where Google was not able to find anybody, which makes sense because certain audiences are going to be more inside of the Google ecosystem than others. Um, that just is what it is. So when I select done, I'm going to see this list, but I'm going to see it in the not in use. It's being populated and it's too small to serve. Um, which just sort of is what it is. But I wanted you to so I wanted you to see the ease of that upload process. Now, 
And if you run into upload issues, I'm going to drop this link on you too. This will help you troubleshoot and figure out formatting. So that'll be in the description of the video. And I want to drop another pro tip, which is you can use Zapier. Um, you can use Zapier to uh, automatically keep this list updated. Because if you're adding a customer list, let's say that it's a redemption campaign, and I want to add a list of everybody that you know signed up as a lead but ended up not becoming a customer. Uploading that on a regular basis would be hard, but I can use Zapier to keep that list up to date automatically based off of information from my CRM. So I've already created the trigger because the trigger is going to be CRM specific and you don't need to see that. I use high level. So I created a trigger in high level so that if the pipeline stage changes to lost or whatever, then um, this contact gets pushed into and then I did my little plus button here and then uh, chose Google Ads. And let me actually just uh, delete this step and show you all everything that I did. So you've got your trigger and then you have to choose your action and I'm going to come over here and say Google Ads and then it's going to say which one and I'm going to say uh, now you have to be really careful because you notice that you have the option to create a customer list. You don't want to do that. You want to add contact to a customer list. Now it's not going to let me go all the way with this because the list that I just created is new and it's not in use. So we're not going to be able to see the completion of this app, but I'll show you the way that it functions. I'll say uh, Google Ads, add a contact to customer list, and then I have to choose the account, uh, which I already have uploaded. And then it's going to ask me to verify Zapier. All right, it's not asking me to do that because I've already done it. You're going to get a little error code here that says, hey, you need to go, uh, you need to go verify Zapier as an approved application instead of Google. Um, you'll click a link, and then it, it'll be at one prompt, Click approve, you're done. Super, super, super easy. Um, just FYI. So we're going to use Google as. Come on, man. Solutions 8. Um, oh, there it is. This is what I want to show you. So uh, you need to add Zapier as an approved data partner. Click here. I'm so glad that happened. I didn't want to cheat you out of this little step in the tutorial. Uh, link. Confirm. Done. Now when I refresh fields, this goes away. Now the customer list is not going to be accessible to me. Oh, I can't believe it's there. That's amazing. That's so fast. Just so you'll know, sometimes it'll take like hours before a new list is here. That's just like the gods of the internet um, blessing me because they knew I was shooting a tutorial. Uh, and then you want to use a unique identifier. I think the email is clearly the, the, like the identifier that you want to use. I actually can't hold on. I don't want to click this on the tutorial because I'm using real data here and I don't want you all to be able to see the lead that I used. Um, well, it looks like a test email anyway, so maybe we're in good shape. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to bring it back and then we'll blur it. So I'll ask, uh, I'll ask Jack to blur it. Jack's our editor. So I've uh, set up my action. As you can see, my unique identifier is the email address. I go continue. I say uh, cool, test and continue. And then this is actually going to push this contact information into that audience in theory. Um, contact was sent to Google Ads. And then I would turn this app on. And now, um, now anytime somebody follows or, or uh, falls into the rules that I've defined for that audience, they automatically get added to my Google ads audience, which means that if I have that audience in a remarketing campaign or whatever, um, we're now targeting those people, which is, yo, that's so ninja. Like, hashtag pro tip, okay? I want to see some thumbs ups and some subscribes out of this one. Like, this one's cool. I hope you agree. Um, that's all I got. That's all I got. I hope y'all are enjoying the channel. I'm enjoying running it. And it's a little daunting at some points. There's also some people that watch that are much smarter than I am, um, which is th feeds my imposter syndrome. But I'm doing my best. We've got 140 clients. So I have a lot to just draw from. And most of what I'm teaching you is stuff that we're doing for on behalf of our clients. Um, and I think we're doing a pretty good job with that. So appreciate you watching, liking, subscribing, commenting, doing all the things that y'all do. I will see you manana.